when you don't have a first round pick, it's really hard to do a great job of filling needs and improving your football team. And certain teams put themselves in a position for different reasons every year in the NFL draft in this way. And the Washington Redskins were a team that this year went without their first round pick in the 2014 NFL draft, hearkening back to that RG3 trade that happened back in 2012. And that was a bitter pill for, I think, for the Redskins to swallow, seeing as how poorly 2013 went for them as an organization, that they ended up with the number two overall pick in the draft, and they didn't have the pick. Oopsie daisies. And in large part, you can look at 2013 and this year's draft as well and still say that a lot of that draft is ultimately going to be measured by the success or failure of RG3 as a long-term franchise quarterback for the Washington Redskins. Well, we know 2013 was a train wreck, a disaster, and Shanahan, thankfully, mercifully for everybody involved, was forced out of the picture, and general manager Bruce Allen, owner Daniel Snyder, bring in Bengals offensive coordinator Jay Gruden to be the man and I was really wondering what they were going to do here with limited picks how they were going to maneuver in the draft how they were going to address some of the key needs that they had and you know when you look at the draft results for the Redskins and I've got all of the picks down in the description box below I thought they actually did a solid job I actually did now some people may scratch their head a little bit at the Trent Murphy pick in the second round the outside linebacker out of Stanford, but I understand it, and I think it's actually their best pick because this was a guy that I thought was a first to second round talent. Instead of taking him at 34, you were able to trade down 13 slots, get a third round pick from the um, Dallas Cowboys, and you know, what you did there was you basically had a guy that you could have taken here, you peeled back, and we're able to take them later and pick up an additional pick in the process. And that is something you need to do <laughs> when you don't have a first round pick. And I'm glad the Washington Redskins understood that. And getting a guy like Murphy here, you have to understand that Arakpo is under the franchise tag. How costly is it going to be to retain him long term? And he doesn't have the greatest injury history, neither does Ryan Kerrigan, you know, a guy who at some point in time they're going to have to entertain giving big money to. A guy like Trent Murphy, when you're running a 3-4 defense, to me, you can never have enough outside pass rushers. You can find ways to maybe line them up inside, or you can flip Arakpo or Kerrigan inside sometimes and have all three of them on the field as pass rushers. You can never have enough pass rushers. And a guy like Murphy, here was good value. And the fact that they could have just taken him at 34 and it would have been all right, the fact that they traded back 13 picks to be able to get him at 47 and pick up an additional third-round pick I thought was genius. And I really like it. Sure, you could sit there and say that corner was maybe the biggest need on the defensive side of the ball. But again, sometimes what's a way to make up for – um, an insufficient secondary is to improve the pass rush of your front seven and bringing in a guy like Trent Murphy out of Stanford, a guy who's drawn some comparisons to maybe a Jared Allen is definitely a way to do that. So to me, Trent Murphy was their best pick, their best value by far. One of the real true steals of the draft, in my opinion, was Morgan Moses, the offensive tackle out of Virginia. Length matters. I think his feet are underrated. I think his technique is underrated. He's a mountain of a man, and I think he could actually stick long-term in the NFL at left tackle. However, he doesn't have to do that because you've got Trent Williams already on the left side. Now, does that bring some security? Maybe that down the road, if you didn't want to keep Trent Williams long-term, you could flip Morgan Moses over to the left side, perhaps. But in the meantime, what have you done? You've addressed another big-time important area uh, for the Washington Redskins, and that is improving the protection for Robert Griffin III. They had to do that. And now you've given them Trent Williams on one side and Morgan Moses on the other side. You have instantly done that. Morgan Moses, to me, a day one starter at right tackle, worst case scenario, for 10 to 12 years in the National Football League. And he kind of fits that Jay Gruden mold of, instead of having those quicker zone blocking technique type of offensive linemen, he likes those bigger, more physical, longer type of offensive linemen. And Morgan Moses fits that mold, as does their other third round pick, Spencer Long, the guard from Nebraska. You know, I kind of second guess this one a little bit because I thought maybe he could have had been had another round or two later. But I understand why they maybe felt that somebody was going to take a chance on him late third or early fourth, and they felt he fit what they did. This is a guy with some upside, with some talent. He's got to be able to stay healthy, but he's a guy that could definitely fit into Jay Gruden's scheme long term. 
Um, but at least, if anything else, you could sit there and say that they improved the protection up front for RG3, and that was something they had to do along with improving the back eight of that defense in the linebacking core, and in particular in the secondary. When you look at picks that could surprise, I would say the biggest one might be actually Ryan Grant, the wide receiver out of Tulane. I think this guy has a lot of the necessary skills to at least, if anything else, be a nice, functional number three or number four NFL wide receiver. He's a decent route runner decent hands, does a lot of things well, maybe not any one thing spectacular, and he's definitely not going to be a big time uh, burner down the field, but he's a guy, again, as a fifth round pick that you can bring in, and he could actually contribute some as a rookie and become a part of the wide receiver rotation for a few years and do it, do it at a very cheap cost, along with the guys like the Deshaun Jacksons and the Pierre Garçons and the Hankersons of the world. Um, in terms of the grading of this draft, like I said at the beginning, a lot of what the Redskins did last year and a lot of what the Redskins did this year in the draft still kind of is graded on the RG3 curve. And ultimately, that's how the success or failure of these last two drafts for the Redskins is going to be measured. Because you look at, somebody did a thing talking about all the players that the Rams were able to get out of that RG3 trade. It's a very impressive haul. It's a very nice class. So RG3 is going to have to establish himself as a franchise, if not elite NFL quarterback, to be able to justify the cost that the Washington Redskins gave up in basically three first round picks and a number two pick in 2012. That's a lot of picks to give up for one player, even if it is a quarterback. Morgan Moses was a huge steal to me. I had him rated, believe it or not, as a top 10 talent in this draft. I thought he was criminally underrated as an offensive lineman, as an offensive tackle. I don't see where people are talking about his questionable feet. I thought he had decent enough feet and he has enough strength and in particular enough arm length to, I believe, stick effectively outside for a long time to come at the National Football League level. I really like some of the day three values that the Washington Redskins got with guys like Bashad Breland. They addressed the secondary with the guy that I think you could have maybe argued was a late second, early third round pick. Uh, guys like Ryan Grant, guys like Lake Seastrunk, the wide, or excuse me, the running back from Baylor to be able to get him in round number six. Look, he never really had to catch the ball at Baylor. Kenny, who knows? But he's another explosive type of back, you know, that comes from that Baylor offense. So, you know, I imagine Jay Gruden will be able to do some things with him. Um, it was really nice to me, too, to see that the Redskins understood that they could have taken their guy at Murphy, but the opportunity was there to take advantage of somebody else's stupidity and panic in the Dallas Cowboys where they traded up for reaching for need a little bit. The Redskins were able to peel back, get maybe best player available on the board in their mind, and pick up an additional pick. That was a great trade. Uh, by the Washington Redskins, and I think played a part in me giving them a C plus. I said ultimately be graded off of RG3, but some of the players that they brought in I thought were good pieces and will be nice contributors for the Washington Redskins for years to come.